Hello and welcome to our third video. This is our very first video concerning how to do calculation, actual calculation uh, in um, Excel. Uh, we're going to go ahead and zoom to 200% and I'm going to uh, start by looking again at a uh, different type of uh, uh, cells that are available for us. Uh, again, I'm going to go ahead and start with B2, but I'm going to go ahead and change the sheet, rename it by call it uh, sales. Uh, sheets and also I'm going to go ahead and color it or uh, give it a color maybe a dark green color so it'll be uh, a little bit noticeable for me just in case and I'm going to go ahead that's the what we're going to do we're going to go ahead and list the three uh, uh, sales uh, or maybe like four sales for uh, spanning through months uh, three months over three months period and we're going to go ahead and see um, how we're going to do the addition, uh, the total for these sales. So let's go ahead and start uh, by saying name and April. And I want to give you a quick uh, uh, hint here to how we're going to be using the fill handle. The fill handle is that feature in the lower right corner of uh, your cell when you click and drag to the right. Notice that I was able to fill that JSON cell with May and June. You tell me where are these coming from? This has actually already been built inside the system because we know that we use a lot of month and days uh, names and varieties of common feature like Q1 for quarter one and so forth. For example, if I put uh, quarter one and I drag it uh, this way or that way, it's going to uh, fill automatically the result for me. Uh, if you want to take a look at that quickly, uh, I'm going to go ahead and show you where you could build your own your own uh, list. Uh, I'm under the option Excel option Advanced, uh, all the way down. It is the custom list. Uh, that means if you're using uh, uh, Excel 2010, 2013, 2007, it's a different uh, location. You could go ahead and build uh, your own list. You could, uh, for example. Uh, I could go ahead and list uh, my kid's name or my family's list if I'm keeping track of their expenses. Uh, if I say here grandfather, I have a grandfather for my kids, then wife and uh, son and daughter. And I'll go ahead and say uh, also me. So I'm going to go ahead and add those. And notice uh, then uh, uh, that list is started with a grandpa. So I could go ahead and confirm it, okay, if I wanted to keep track of the list, I mean the expenses of my family, I started with grandpa, then I could go ahead and list it, look here how we were able to build the list. So if you have 100 employee or 100 different activities or tasks that you constantly try to keep track of, it's good to go ahead and put those into the list, in under option, under advanced, advanced, under edit list. Anyway, to go back to the uh, problems, we have to go ahead and say something like John. This is the first name. We're not going to really be specific and let's say Mary and Sally. And we could go ahead and uh, maybe another person here, let's say Robert. <coughs> okay. And I'm going to go ahead and make uh, this is values. And I'm going to go ahead and say John made only the cell little. Uh, Mary Wiley is, is a good salesperson, so she is selling uh, a lot. And here we go. And Sally also is a good uh, salesperson. And we could go ahead and do that. Also, Robert is a good one. So, <clears throat> all right. So we're going to just make those uh, lists. And I'm going to go ahead and highlight all of these. And I'm going to go to the home. Under the number, we have two options here. We have the option of uh, formatting this as currency. And if you notice here, when I expand the width of uh, C column, the currency format is to have the dollar sign all the way to uh, the right of the last digit from left. If I change this to the default, uh, which is an accounting, or also you could go ahead and do it from inside the list, it's accounting where it pushes the dollar all the way to the left. Most accountants likes this type of format. So it's up to you. Uh, I don't know. Some people tend to like this over the other one. So if we do the accounting, 
that's fine. Let's go ahead and, of course, select the top columns and go ahead and click in between them in order to use only the space that we need. Of course, we're not limited to the space that we need. We always could go ahead and select it and expand it to one width. All of them will become in the same width. Uh, some people are wondering what will happen if I have this little list of data here kind of distorted completely like something like this and really somebody sent it to you they were not aware what's going on and you said I really swear to you that it was four uh, names and four month and I believe me I really uh, I'm I, I could tell you this honest to God if this is what I send you but you look at it it seems like raw well, this is kind of like completely distorted. How are you going to get it back? Three clicks. The first click is to go to this area and you click on it. It's going to select the whole sheet, believe it or not. The second, to click anywhere between two columns. And the third uh, is going to be, here we go. So, between the two rows and you're going to get, of course, get out of the selected area. And they, when they swore to God that they really were having everything, they were actually telling the truth. But somehow they distorted the, uh, the, the format, or they played with it, or they could not really know what was going on, or something happens to it, so it's no big deal. All right, we could fix anything if we know the trick that this is actually select the whole sheet, so it would actually adjust everything there. And we could go and click between two rows in order to align the rows and also between two row, uh, columns to align the columns. Having said that, let's go to actually to do this calculation. And we're going to do five different types of uh, <coughs> uh, adding the sum of these three months for each individual. Uh, the first one, I would like you to be very cautious of not using it in the real world because it's dangerous. Uh, some people, for whatever reason, of course, we start with equal sign, and they hard code the actual value. So they type 90 plus 8 plus uh, 34 uh, plus uh, 55. You know how I'm making all sorts of mistakes when I'm typing. It's going to give you the right result. However, you're using Excel here or completely out of uh, what it's supposed to be doing for us, using it as a silly calculator. So uh, Excel is way more powerful than that. So we need to go ahead and uh, uh, go back to this one here. Notice, for example, if I change this to $1,000 for John, it's not going to reflect this the changes in the cell. Also, later, as you will see, I'm not going to go ahead and do the sum for everyone if I have 3,000 people. I'm going to go ahead and use the fill handle to drag it down. So by having this, and as a constant, I'm going to get the same result. So really, in one way or the other, I'm going to convey this message to you. Please don't do it. And make sure that you understand uh, that Excel is a bad dynamic. It's a bad automatic recalculation, a bad change in your mind. So the second way of doing it, which is okay for a small number of cells, uh, 3, which I'm clicking on it, C3 plus uh, uh, D3, I'm clicking on it. I'm not typing the cell address. Please don't do that because we have what we call the fat finger syndromes, meaning our finger is going to stay the same size as a human being. However, everything is getting small, like look at your smartphone. So the more we type, the more mistakes we make. So try to avoid typing as much as possible by clicking on the cells or by hopefully one of these days, sooner or later, we'll be talking directly to the computer so I don't have even to type or click anything. Anyway, look at this. It's very dynamic. If I go back to this one here and say 908, if I recall correctly, immediately changes the number. Fantastic. Great. That's what we want. However, if I have a 300 cells to add, it's going to be a very tedious task. I mean, you're going to age through the whole process needlessly. Every moment is a precious moment in our lives, so let's go ahead and use it effectively. Uh, and instead of using the uh, click plus, click plus, click plus, as I said earlier, three, no big deal, but like when the number gets so huge, you're going to really waste a lot of time. So this, uh, since this is actually, uh, can be obtained through a function, and uh, what we have done is a formula, I could go ahead and use the function. The function, which is the most common function in Excel is the sum, is to go ahead and look at the auto sum here. In addition to the auto sum, we have also other common function average 
uh, count numbers max and minimum, and we have an option to look for other function or seek them by searching for that specific function. Anyway, I'm going to go to the auto sum and click on it. What happens? Excel gets right, but not all the time Excel will get right. So please make sure you select the range. Now we have a range. We don't have really one cell or two or three. And this is the range is going to be C3 through the colon should be pronounced as a through E3. And the name of the function is gonna, must be preceding the parentheses and the range. For whatever reason, some people, I always see it in my students' homework, that they forget the name of the function and expect some magical uh, you know, things is going to help them writing the name of the function. If you don't have a name of function like sum, average, max, min, p, and t, whatever it is, and you put it in before the parentheses, there's no way Excel is going to look at your code except by giving you an error. So make sure that the sum is there because anything, in reality, what is this? It's really to take all these different values between C3 and E3 as parameters as value will be feeding the sum function and the sum function very nicely will give you back the sum of these all the sum of all these values so this is the third way of doing it the fourth way of doing it and we I mean we have a lot more than four or five ways is to go ahead and go to the formula and you could go ahead and insert the function and look here you could search for the function it's sum go and now we have all the function that has the word sum on them. So it's going to help us really greatly to understand. This is a very powerful interface. The fact it's a powerful interface is it adds actually multiple, multiple ranges. So if you really wanted to include a lot of different range in your calculation, that's the right way. So I'm going to go ahead and select all these three. Of course, we need to do it correctly here. All the correct range, which is this range. And of course, say OK to confirm it. And here we go. So this is the fourth way. Uh, in the formal line search function, we have million type of function. We didn't get to really uh, uh, look at other uh, unknown function, but the time is going to come to really discuss many, many other functions through the class. And uh, fifth way is if when you get to really, uh, if you're too tired to go to that search function, you could get the same thing from here, fx. Okay. Uh, if you get if you are around the home auto sum and you're really in that area, you don't want to really go all the way here to formula click insert function. No big deal. You could go ahead and also get that access directly from your function. So wherever you want, it's completely up to you. Uh, if we go here to auto sum more function, you're going to get the same uh, windows to enable you to search for that function. The same thing we get it from here. Uh, actually, I have to have the cell empty in order to get that windows. In order to see here, I have to delete that in order to start fresh. And here we go. Okay, uh, that's basically how it's going to work. The last way, if you start to work with Excel for some time, in no time you will be learning how to start with equal sign, type the name of the function, open parentheses, select your own range, make sure that you select the right range. If I selected everything here, it's going to sum between C3 through E3, which is going to give me two-dimensional table uh, of some sort. So we have to actually go ahead and select only this and close that. And if you don't close it, Excel will help you by closing it, by the way. And here we go. So we learned about five different ways, and it's really good to know that uh, any of those would work except the first one. Okay, make sure that you do understand. You don't want to really use Excel as uh, an addition or calculating uh, tools uh, for constants. Now, how are we going to actually do the sum for Mary, Sal Sally, and Robert? Uh, there's two ways. If I do have data here to the right of this one here, is the best way is to double click quickly. And obviously, I don't have width enough in the if columns to show the data. So I'm going to go ahead and click in between or enlarge it. See, uh, the, don't be afraid of those pound sign or has sign or tic-tac-toe signs are actually just to tell me that I don't have enough width. So it's not an error. It's just to remind you to expand the width of that column. And this is the best way to do it if you have the data again here. If you don't have the data here, then you could get data here and you still want it to sum 
uh, and you're going to go ahead and drag it yourself. So you keep dragging it if you have 300 rows. Uh, if you <coughs> if you have data next to the, the lift to this, you just go ahead and click it twice. All right. So to base be safe all the time, actually click and drag down. That works all the time. Uh, perfect. Uh, for now, what we're going to do. And now I wanted to go ahead and see how we're going to give a commission to each one of these people based on 10 percent. So this is uh, I'm going to ask myself if there's a function to do this, or is there something I need to do in order to come up with the right calculation? There's no function that's going to really uh, calculate 10 percent of a value. 10 percent of any value is to take that value and multiply it by the 10 percent. Uh, there is a, you need to take a note of the fact that uh, this is a formula, so we're going to start with equal, click in the total to represent that value, knowing that if 3 is going to be a uh, later to change to, I was, I will show you, if 4, if 5, if 6. So I'm going to go ahead and multiply that by 10%, 10 percent, 10 percent and notice here I didn't type 0 0.10 which is 10 percent I type 10 percent followed by the percentage sign and here we go so what are we going to do we're going to go ahead and click again twice because I that will do for me uh, because I have data to the left and here we go uh, everybody get 10 percent uh, obviously the 10 percent is a clear uh, it's a correct calculation so what happens when I did uh, drag the fill handle here or clicked it twice, it doesn't matter what happens. What happened is Excel knew that you want to do the same calculation for Mary that you did for John's data. So it went ahead and adjusted the range from C3 through E3 uh, to C4 through E4. The same thing for, I'm going to hit escape, uh, when you are in the in editing mode of the cell you cannot really move to the other cell you have to turn turn it off uh, and here we go I am in editing mode so I have to turn it off either by hitting escape or hitting enter it doesn't matter but anyway we'll take a look this is C4 it through C uh, E4 now it changed to C5 it through E5 and guess what this is exactly the same it changed from C5 through E5 to C6 through A6 how did that change that's what the job of the fill handle to fill those data by moving the calculation in relation to the next adjacent range in relation that's why we call this relative address so the relative address when I don't have to worry about just using the fill handle where I wanted to do the same calculation for this range the same thing for this range and the same thing for that range this here, what, is exactly the same thing, except here we have one to be treated as a fill, I mean relative address, and one is going to be constant. Constant is going to repeat itself. So here we have F4 multiplied by 10%. I'm hitting escape in my left hand, and F5 multiplied by 10%, and I'm hitting escape, and F6 multiplied by 10%. So the relative address did adjust itself from F3 to F4, 2F5, 2F6. And you tell me this is really magnificent uh, uh, feature of a spreadsheet. I'll tell you yes, but we have to be careful. Sometimes using the fill handle is going to really make it uh, a problem or problematic for us if we're not aware of what we're doing. And guess what? We're going to do that in the next video. Thank you for watching and have a great time. Bye-bye.